moron! Hey, moron! Duh! Look at me! I'm the whoa water boy! Duh! Oh my goodness. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is Thirsty Thursday, and I hope that all your Thursday dreams come true. Tonight, we're going to be doing a little something special uh, with one of the Cowboys Mafias. Oh, my goodness. Jay Tuck. Jay Tuck got in touch with me yesterday. I said, man, you know, it, it's kind of crazy because it's it, we are literally shit on. But let's be clear here. We're, we're just a YouTuber. There was always like a euthanism. A youth, youth, is that the right word, honey? Euthanism. Euf, euthanism. Okay. What she said, you know, about, you know, oh, he's a YouTuber. Oh, you know, because I would say to people, people say, you know, um, what do you do? I was like, oh, I do construction work and stuff like that. And I'm a landlord and I'm a YouTuber. And it's like a YouTuber. I said, oh, okay. What? Okay. So, all right. So, or, or, okay. What would be a better term than honey? Uh, basically, uh, huh? Just basically looking down on somebody, you know? Okay, so what, what is the good term? Huh? They shit on us. Uh, that was what I said originally, and then I tried to say, let me try and come up with a different word. Because people look down upon. Okay, whatever it is. There would always be, oh, he's a YouTuber. You know, and, and there's always, was always the jokes about YouTubers. And see, here's the thing, you know, I will, you know, take Vosh Lombardi's film breakdown, who was one of the originators before Brian Baldinger started doing it, and now before the Dallas Cowboys, now are breaking down film of our UFL players. You know, they literally have taken ideas, they shit on us, and then they take ideas from us and use them and then continue to act like we're just nothing. But that's okay. Because there's many, many, many times that we've been ahead of the curve with what's going on with others out there. I know people are going to talk, oh, new media. I'm not saying I'm perfect because I do make mistakes. I do have mental lapses with names and mispronounces and all that and all this. But it shouldn't be that we're shitting on each other. It should be that we're working together. Okay, my wife says imitation is the highest form of flattery. Okay, well, there's that. But then, you know, uh, imitation and then shitting on you after it, you know, that, that doesn't work. That's rude. That's it. That, that's rude, okay? So be that as it may, uh, my main man, uh, Justin Tuck, who is killing it on Twitter and things, gets a lot of that venom and stuff as they use his stuff, and then, of course, proceed to kind of downplay him. The reason why I play the moron clip from The Waterboy is because we've been literally called the morons. Literally, the reason why I got, got Cowboys Mafia was because of RJ, okay? RJ literally said, I don't want to piss off Cowboys Mafia, and I'm kind of like, oh, well, that's Bosh, that's DMV, that, that's me, that's, you know, Game Time Brian and Primetime Phil and Bosh, you know, there's a lot of us out here that are the voice of the people. So, when the Dak Prescott situation happened, where he was being accused of sexual assault and things, 105.3 The Fan was very quick to put on, I, I believe they had on his attorney, the, the accuser's attorney, that trashed Dak Prescott. When the first case was dismissed in Dallas County, it was another one of my uh, Cowboys Mafia, Dak Attack, who put it out there that here's all the information from the court. He had receipts on what happened with the case. He had knowledge, personal knowledge, of the attorney that was suing. And it was literally days before you heard anything from a 105 fan. So yesterday evening, when the news broke that 
the case against Dak Prescott, the suit, was dismissed by the judge, which was also the Dallas Police Department said there's no evidence here for a case that that was going through that now two, two different jurisdictions had thrown this thing out. I was curious to see what we end up getting from everybody else. It's kind of beginning to really hit now, even though it was yesterday evening that we started talking about it. But this is 105.3 The Fan this morning, because I was curious to see if they were going to bring it up this morning. And, and let, let, let's go through and, and hear it with, from their own words. Good morning, Metroplex. Sean and RJ with you for the next week by ourselves, along with Peyton. And no more Ryan after tomorrow. Bobby Bell taking a little vacation time. A Collin County judge dismissed the Dak Prescott sexual assault lawsuit that was filed against him and scheduled a hearing to levy sanctions against the plaintiff and her legal team. That news coming out yesterday. So a win legally for Dak. It's great news. Uh, that is great news for him. Uh, for uh, the Cowboys, they don't have to uh, have too many questions about this come training camp time. When they get to Oxnard, they may have one question about it, wrapping it up, uh, but it won't be something that's daily. And it's not going to be something that will linger on to the season uh, as, as it appears right now. And Levi McCatherine, Dak's attorney, said despite her and her legal team's relentless efforts to extort money and damage Dak's reputation, Justice has consistently prevailed and will continue to do so. These ploys distract from the trauma of legitimate sexual assault survivors and undermine the progress that our society has made in supporting them. We are proud that Dak stands up against this injustice and thankful that the judge agrees. So now we will see how much Dak wins in terms of mm -hmm. the damages against her for filing what the courts are calling False accusations. Yeah, false accusations. That's something that he can go back at. This is also something that a lot of people are pushing for, especially in recent years. Like, if you do, if, if you like, if it's a real false allegation and you're doing this on purpose, yeah, that there needs to be like super severe, more harsh punishment than already happens. Agreed. Because you're, you're, you're really what, what this winds up doing is if this is a false allegation or any of these from Trevor Powers mm -hmm. to Dax, you're diminishing the actual people that are being wrong because now we all look at it with a cynical mm -hmm. eye. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big problem. Yeah. yeah. You should be lit up. You should be yes. absolutely punished. No doubt. N no doubt. Doesn't matter what it is. If you're like you lying about somebody do doing something wrong to you, you need to be lit up for it because. That first of all, it's I mean it's wrong. Yeah, one hundred percent right. Calling me that. a rapist or sexual right. assault or, or or anything. I mean it could be it could be anything. Um, but, but like also it really does diminish the actual people that are victims. That are victims. I think. Agree. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I think it does. Yeah. Well, look at the reaction when this story first came out. Yeah. Everyone was like, "No, it's a money grab." All the cowboy fans. All the cowboys fan did, and and you know we saw this with JJ Reddick the other day. There was a lot of people that were like, well, why are you just coming out with this now? You know, um, what what happened to 20 years ago? The girl who said he used the N-word right. on her. And if that comes out that she made this up, then, like, she should absolutely face strict punishment because that, it's a, it, it, that diminishes people who actually are called that word. Speaking of a mess, I think that we okay. have the new Brittany Mahomes, and it's Matt Stafford. Okay. Uh, let me let me applaud 105 fan for coming out this morning and now saying, hey, this time it's dismissed and that the court system is looking at basically sanctioning them for false allegations. Basically, this is a 180 completely of what was transpired before. But as you say, people making false allegations should definitely be punished. Well, those who live in glass houses shouldn't also cast the first stone because I believe you guys helped to spread this even more by having the accuser's attorney. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, and you guys can give me your opinion on that. 
but to have their accuser on your station making these false allegations made it bigger than what it was. If, if you follow what I'm saying here? But I'm glad that they are doing the right thing and at least saying, mm, it was wrong. I wish they would have said, you know, we jumped to conclusions ourselves with some of the stuff and maybe we shouldn't have had their attorney on and yada, 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 or, you know, so on. Be that as it may, the question now is, does this, um, not that, okay, not that it necessarily made a difference one way or the other. It was all assumed, it was all assumed that the Joneses, which like to do contracts in training camp. You'll remember last year, Diggs got his contract literally during the press conference for the opening of training camp. Zeke Elliott got his contract in training camp, late in training camp. Zach Martin got his contract, even after holding out for a couple of weeks into training camp, during training camp. And it's funny to me how people think that old rich people are going to change their ways. There's a saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And Jerry Jones, he's an old dog. And he ain't got no new tricks. He's not going to change. Stephen Jones is not going to change because there's no ramifications. Doesn't matter. If you lose in other places, people stop going to the games. But with revenue sharing, with being the soap opera it is the Dallas Cowboys, the more drama the better. Do you think that if the Cowboys start losing games, that it's going to affect the bottom line this season? No. That'll be just more talk. It'll be the speculation of, does Dak stay? Do they fire the whole staff? Who's going to be the new coach coming in? I might even say, if the Cowboys were to win the Super Bowl, it might actually hurt the bottom line. Because of all these things that you say and talk about and discuss, you know, is Dak Press, you know, regular season champ. It was kind of like all of the jokes that were lost because the Eagles finally won a Super Bowl. It used to be you'd say, hey, you know, I'm dating a girl. She's an Eagle fan, man. I, you, you know why I do that? Because she, she used to know rings, you know. We used to call them the ringless wonders. But then they won one, all that went away. Bro, the bottom line in the NFL, it's about the money. And guess what brings in the money? Drama with the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I'm not going to say that it's a conspiracy theory to keep the Cowboys down. But it sure does make for good copy if you are the NFL, the Dallas Cowboys, and dysfunction. In spite of that, somehow, some way, the Cowboys continue to be the talk of the town. To be always at least in a position to be in the playoffs or a position to fail in the playoffs. It just seems like they're always good enough to do that. Burning questions here. I like this on ESPN because, as they put it, one man's junk or one man's trash is another man's treasure. In talking about Kellen Moore and going into, will Dak Prescott be a cowboy after this year? Right, Kellen Moore, I'm talking about, will be able to provide Jalen Hurts with a lot of answers to the test because clearly when you watch this Philadelphia team uh, on offense last year, they were very ordinary, very stagnant. They didn't have a lot of answers as far as what teams were being, what teams were doing as far as throwing things at them. I think Kellen Moore will be able to provide some of that for this Philadelphia Eagles offense. Well, I guess Dallas is trash. It's Philadelphia's treasure. Uh, what are you hearing, Dan, out of <laughs> Dallas about Dak Prescott's contract? Nothing. Well, nothing. Uh, and I think that's the big story, right? Like, they have had conversations uh, throughout the offseason. And by they, I mean, like, Jerry Jones and Dak Prescott have had conversations about, like, hey, you know, uh, wouldn't it be great to get this done ahead of the season? But I don't get the sense that the Cowboys have had serious conversations with the agent about a new deal. And when you look at Dak Prescott's situation, he has 
every bit of the leverage. He can wait for the Cowboys to come to him with the deal he wants. His worst case scenario is play out the season and hit free agency yeah. uh, as a qualified top end starting quarterback in his prime. That is something that you don't see very often and it is something that will be very, very lucrative if he and the Cowboys cannot reach agreement on a new contract before then. Well, speaking to that, let's take a listen to what Adam Schefter said about Dak's underrated value. When do we ever see a quarterback that good Mm -hmm. ever become a true unrestricted free agent because you could just imagine the places that Dak Prescott could and would fit in. To me, he's in line to become the first 60 plus million dollar quarterback mm. of the year. Dak, we have a lame duck coach. We got a lame duck quarterback. Are Dak and Mike McCarthy's jobs on the line this year? D Wood. Who's that? Is that for me? Well, you, I, uh, yeah. I said D Wood. Oh, you talking oh, to me, okay. D? Oh. Oh, listen, let me, RC. I'm gonna just pull. I'm gonna pull from Kendra Lamar. With as far as Dak, we gonna be all right. There we you go. We gonna right. be all right. Like Dak Prescott ain't got, don't have anything to worry about here. I mean, Chef, they already referenced it. The fact that he has an opportunity to do something that's rare in the National Football League to be an unrestricted free agent. I think if Dak goes out there, and he doesn't play his best ball. He's still gonna be a coveted quarterback in free yeah. agency because of the lack of quarterbacks in this league. Now, Mike McCarthy, on the other hand, let me tell you something. Man, that boy, it, that boy hotter than hot fish grease right now as far as his hotter than concerned. Fish grease. He needs to go out there. Dallas Cowboys got to at least get to an NFC championship game. I mean, we've been talking about this thing now for years with the, as far as the Dallas Cowboys are concerned. They've been to the divisional round, at least get to the champion, championship game. Can you please mm -hmm. do that? What would success, success be considered for the Dallas Cowboys? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think D. Wood's right. I mean, conference championship game, you say it's been years. It's been 30 years. Like, that's, that's not just a handful of years. That's an incredible drought. Uh, for the Dallas Cowboys. So if they were to get that far, uh, I think you would think ownership would have to consider that uh, a successful season. But yeah, even just advancing in the playoffs, you show up for the playoffs and, and, and play your best, right? I mean, like that's what they failed to do last year after maybe Dak's best season. So yeah, I think jobs on the line. I think if it were to bottom out and they miss the playoffs, yeah, I could see wholesale changes there, including at quarterback. I could see them saying, look, it's been nine years with the same guy. We haven't gone anywhere. He's about to get crazy expensive. Let's look at other options. Cowboys aren't looking at it that way. I think they expect to be good. But if, if, uh, if they were to have a bad year, if Dak doesn't play the way he did last year, or if they struggle to make the playoffs, I would think that there's a possibility of major mm -hmm. changes, yes. But that's the scary thing to me. We have mm -hmm. seen Dak play extremely well during the regular yes. season. And we've seen Kirk Cousins get on the market and get the bag. We saw Trevor Lawrence, who fell flat last season, get the bag. And now they're talking about Tua Tonga Valoa. If I'm Jerry Jones, I'm absolutely nervous that Dak Prescott does the same thing and does demand 60 million. If you had to take a guess right now, Graz, is this Dak Prescott's last year in Dallas? I'm still saying no. I still think they eventually get something done just because, I mean, it, I don't think, I think Jerry Jones is willing to pay top of the market uh, for his quarterback, and, it, and it, we've seen uh, for other positions as well. It just sometimes takes him a while to get there, uh, and I think it could be the case this time. Even if they don't get a deal done by the end of the season, the Cowboys will still have the first crack at signing him before free agency, although yeah. they would tell you that gets dicey because you by think? then, you know, R.C., D. Wood, Sometimes, you know, these players have a way of hearing maybe what other teams have in mind, even though they're not supposed to. Just just every now and then, there are some conversations that take place that aren't particularly... Every now, and then. now, here's the question for you guys for the day is, does this take away one of those roadblocks for the Cowboys? Was this one of the reasons that they wanted to wait and make sure, even though they had his their attorney, uh, Levi McLaren, <clears throat> there... Was this a roadblock to say, let's just wait till this thing is settled, too? And, you know, with Dak Prescott's birthday coming next month while they're in training camp, that, you know, let's make it a happy birthday for him and get him a new contract. And now let's go ahead and start getting this thing done. Who knows? But in the end, it's funny because we've been here before with the whole Dak Prescott 
conversation on letting him go. We're doing the rounds now of all the quarterbacks that could be replacements for Dak Prescott. Now, um, before it was the car crash, now it is Russell Wilson's turn. Um, I'm wondering if we're going to get to Jimmy G, if that's going to be a possibility, or possibly we've talked about her, Kirk Cousins before because Atlanta, of course, drafted a quarterback as well and figured that you know he's t- his time is short-winded as well. So we'll see. And uh, you know how it always is. There's always a lot to talk about when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys. Don't forget tonight, uh, 8 o'clock Eastern, I'll be on with my man, Jay Tuck, and we'll be talking about the boys. As always, I appreciate you guys, and peace.